Before you add that clip to your timeline, did you know that you can actually take part of that clip and turn it into its very own teeny tiny little sub clip? Yeah! And there's actually more stuff that you can do to your clips from within the media pool before you've even added them to your timeline. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. But before we do, this video is brought to you by the lovely folks over at Scan Pro Video. Scan Pro Video is one of the UK's leading providers of equipment for professional video productions. So if you need a DaVinci Resolve license, they've got them. If you need a Nvidia Studio laptop, they have the place for those. Need a drone or a Blackmagic camera, they've got those as well. Whatever you need, Scan have got you covered. So click the link down below to go see for yourself. So with that out of the way, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve, hop onto the edit page and take a look. And for my first tip, organize and color. This is really simple stuff, but it's worth just running through real quick. So over in the media pool, if I right click over on the far left here, I can create new bins. Bins are essentially folders which just help you stay organized. But there's another way to create those which is really handy. So if I open up this folder here, another real quick tip for you, if you right click on the column headings, there's a bunch of additional options you can use again just to help you stay organized. If I select a handful of clips from this folder, so let's go with these here, and then right click, there's an option to create bin with selected clips. So then if I give that a click, it's going to automatically create a bin and put all of those clips within there, which again, nice quick way of staying organized. Now to color these clips, if you either right click on an individual one, or you can highlight multiple of them and then right click. There's an option for clip color and flags. So if I go to clip color, I'm going to set these to be orange. And then whenever I drag one of these from the media pool onto my timeline, it's a nice bright orange. Again, it's a real quick way of just organizing your footage, setting colors so that when you do add it to your timeline, you already know exactly what things are. Number two, pre transform. So I'm going to double click on this video within my media pool and it'll pop up in my preview here. Now with that open, I'm gonna open up the inspector, go to video, and I've got all of my usual transform controls within here. So if I zoom this in, I can change the angle, do whatever I like to do. But if I now grab that video from the media pool, put it on my timeline, it's gonna automatically have all of those transform controls applied. It's a real nice way of reshaping or zooming something in before you've actually added it to your timeline. Now you can also do this for multiple at once. So I've got a bunch of photos within here. All I'm gonna do, double click on the one so I can see it within the preview window. Doesn't matter which one, you just want to open one so you've got it for a reference. Then we're gonna select all of them by clicking and dragging. Then within the inspector video, we can transform. Let's change the angle once again, pop them on our timeline and boom, every single one has those transforms applied winner now another quick bonus tip let's reset these so i'm going to highlight them all and then just click on the little reset icon within the inspector a lot of these images don't actually fit the frame you can see we've got black edges on the left and right some of them are vertical like this one what you can also do highlight them all once again in the inspector scroll down to scaling and then change that to be fill and it will automatically fill the frame so all of those images if we put them on the timeline will automatically be zoomed in to fill the frame. Now you can do this anyway by timelines, by going to your timeline, right click, timelines, timeline settings, and changing the mismatched resolution to be full frame with crop, but it's really handy to be able to do it on a clip by clip basis as well. Number three, slow motion. So I've got these 50 frames per second clips within this bin here. And if I open up my timeline, my project settings, you can see this is actually 30 frames. Now I could do the maths. I could pop this on here, give it a click, go to the speed change and figure it all out. But it's much easier to do this within the media pool. Now you can do this for individual clips or by highlighting multiple of them like so. Right click, go to clip attributes and then change the video frame rate. So these are currently set to 50. If I change these to 29.97, which is the same as my timeline, and then click on OK, then drop these onto my timeline. These are automatically going to be slowed down to play correctly at 30 frames per second. So as you can see, they're automatically slowed down. Next up, number four, ins and outs. So I'm going to go back to this video once again. It's just sort of a talking head like so. And what we're going to do, using the I and O keys on our keyboard, we can mark ins and outs. So these are sections that we want to add onto our timeline. Then we can either click and drag to add it onto our timeline, 
or we can use the F keyboard shortcuts, all of which I've listed on screen for you now. So now we've added that clip to our timeline. Now to get back to the clip within the media pool, just hit Q on your keyboard and you'll jump back to that source. So you can see we've got our in and out marked here. So then we can simply find the next section we want, in and out, let's just click and drag, pop that bit on there, hit Q on our keyboard, next bit, in, out, and off you go. It's a nice quick way of building up that timeline. And last but not least, taking that one step further, creating sub clips. So I've got this clip here, and as you can see, there's a bit of messing around at the beginning before I actually get the shot that I want. So I want to turn this bit into its own mini clip. So what we're going to do, find the section we want once again, we'll hit I and O to mark our ins and outs, go with about there. Then right click on the actual little white bar, and you've got an option to create a sub clip, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts of Alt and B, or Option and B if you're on a Mac. It's going to ask you to give it a name, so I'm going with Walking with Laptop. And then you've got this Use Full Clip Extents option. I would personally recommend just always ticking that. I'll show you what that does in a moment. And then we're going to hit Create. Now within that bin, we have a new clip called Walking with Laptop. And we pop it on our timeline, and it's just that section of the clip. Now what we can even do is delete the original and just have the walking with laptop. We can pop it on there, easy peasy, job done. Now I'm gonna make another sub clip, but this time without the full clip extents and create. And we'll add this down here. This one is the full clip and what it allows me to do is still access all of the original files. I can make this longer, shorter, or I can roll it backwards and forwards. The one without that ticked is limited. It's only that particular section. You can't then access any of the original clip so you're stuck with those hard starts and ends. And that's it for this one. I'm gonna be at NAB this weekend, so if you find yourself there, make sure to come and say hello. Right, take it easy. I'll see you next time. Bye.